I said, I don't know about you, but when I wasn't saved, I did like to party. And now that I'm with the Lord Jesus Christ, I didn't stop partying. I just changed partners. I just changed partners. I'm still dancing. I'm still dancing. I'm still dancing. I'm just not doing the worldly game. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yes, 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 yes. Great is the Lord. Good morning, Grace Family Church. Good morning, Facebook family. Welcome to the Cathedral Grace Family Church, where we're building God's kingdom one family at a time through evangelism, education, and empowerment. We're so excited to have you join in with us and allow me to come into your homes. We're so excited to do that again. Thank you. We know that the governor has uh, kind of released for the churches a little bit. I think he says uh, 50 or 25 percent of your building up to 50, but we're still going to exercise some precaution at this season. So we thank you for indulging us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. Going to ask if you would journey with us this morning. <clears throat> Please journey with us to Acts. 16, verse 25 and 26. Acts 16, verses 25 and 26. Thank you for sitting at your kitchen table in your breakfast nook, in your family room, in your den. Those of you that are sitting on the bed, those of you that are on the porch, front porch or back porch, wherever you are, for the six or seven of you that are here, to help us make this possible. We thank you for being here. Acts 16, verse 25 and 26. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was an earthquake, so that the foundation of the prison was shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened. And everyone's bands were loosed. This is the word of the Lord. Our message today is the answer to discouragement. The answer to discouragement. Let's pray. Father, we love you and thank you for your loving kindness, your tender mercies, and your bountiful blessings. Thank you, God, for the wonderful opportunity and privilege to be in the land of the living. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you, God, for these turbulent times issuing us an answer to discouragement. Breathe now on your manservant. Look over all that is transpiring in our world today. We need you like never before. And we thank you in advance, giving you all the glory, giving you all the honor, and giving you all the praise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and God's people said Amen. come on and put your blessed hands together if you're loving yeah 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 come on for 15 seconds 15 seconds and let's just change the atmosphere glory to God glory to God hey glory to God yes Lord yes Lord yes Lord amen Amen. The answer to discouragement. It is imperative during these times of current events that we that have the uh, task of speaking to uh, the body of Christ and others take advantage, amen, of the current events, eluding, illuminating alluding to, illuminating, paint, putting some light on it also. The protesters, our young people that are out here protesting, should not be doing it alone. And we are also extending another invitation to our white evangelical brothers and sisters to stand up with us and denounce what is going on in our world. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. It is, uh, or needs to be made clear that discouragement is real. Amen? And it also needs to make, be made clear how 
we became discouraged. Statistically, the United States of America is 5% of the world's population. I'm not talking about the, you know, what we are in the United States. The United States of America represents 5% of the totality of the world's population. Out of all the people in the world, the United States only represents 5% of the total population. 25% of the world's prison population is in these United States. We only represent 5% of the total world's population, but 25% of the world's prison population is incarcerated in 5% of the world or in these United States. That means one out of four people in the world that are incarcerated are incarcerated in the United States. Let me say it again. That means one out of four People that have their hands to bars are, are incarcerated in the United States, listen now, which is the land of the free and the home of the brave. In 1972, in the United States of America, our prison population was 300,000 individuals. In 1972, there were 300,000 people incarcerated in the United States of America. Today, there's 2.3 million people incarcerated in the United States of America. Not 200, 2.3 million people are incarcerated in the United States. Now, we only make up, as black people, 13.8% of the United States of America. And out of that 2.3 million people that are incarcerated, over 50% of that prison population are black males. Something is wrong. The 13th Amendment says it's unconstitutional for someone to be held as a slave. Somebody say thank you. It says it's unconstitutional for someone to be held as a slave. Uh, the, the abolishment of slavery has taken place. But there is a clause or a loophole in the 13th Amendment. The amendment says it grants freedom to all Americans, here it comes, the clause, with the exception of some with punishment of a crime. Somebody say, paint the picture. Paint the picture. With the exception of some with the punishment of a crime. So, so you are granted freedom as an American unless you are a criminal. Meaning the 13th Amendment is a tool to be used by one who wants to still oppress. Henceforth, we get mass incarceration. It's amazing to me that during those 70s, there was a cry out for war on drugs. Listen at this. Now, 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 I'm not against the cry for war on drugs, but they, they, they based a war on drugs as a crime issue, not as a health issue. As a crime issue, not as a health issue. And so all we have to do is vilify black people as drug addicts, and now they are criminals and according to the 13th Amendment and the Constitution, we can strip them of their freedoms. It, 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 it is amazing to me because today, now, 
the war on drugs is considered a health issue. Nobody now is addressing the war on drugs as a crime issue. Today, it is addressed as a health issue. They have, they have, they have grants being given to hospitals. The, the government has found money. They can't find it for our public schools, but they found money. They can't find it for our youth to have jobs, but they found money. The government has found money to grant the hospitals to treat drug use and abuse as a health issue. When for years there has been a disparity, there, there has been a group of people that use cocaine, a powdery substance. And then there's been a group of people whose communities were, were infiltrated with crack, a rock substance. And, and, and if you were black and used crack, you almost went to jail for all your life. I got to tell the truth. If you were black and used crack, when you went to court, you almost went to jail for all your life. You start going through the community. What happened to? What happened to? Where's such and such? Where's this? Where's that? All for, for, for the residue of crack. And, and don't even talk about the little bit of marijuana or the roach that was an ashtray in the car. And then when a certain group of people were using cocaine, the pottery substance, they go to the same court in front of the same judge and then get sent home. You know, get a fine. Community service. How is this possible? I'm glad you asked. Because 95% of the prosecutors are white. 95% of the prosecutors are white. And today, America wants to know why we are discouraged. We are marching because we are discouraged. We are protesting because we are discouraged. We are looting because we are discouraged. Now don't be confused. Our discouragement did not begin with the raping of black girls, not women. They were girls during slavery. Our discouragement did not begin with the lynching of black men during slavery. Our discouragement did not begin with the water hoses or dogs that were sick on us during the civil rights movement. Neither did discouragement begin with the years of Jim Crow laws. The murder of Emmett Till, it didn't start with Emmett Till, it didn't start with Dr. Huey Newton, it didn't start with the murder of Mega Evans or Malcolm X or Dr. King, Rodney King or Trayvon Martin. We did not become discouraged even with the current murders of Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, and George Floyd. We are discouraged because from the time the first ship stopped at Jamestown, Virginia, until now. You have asked us to make bricks without straws. You've asked us to play Monopoly without money. You've asked us to wait. And you know what Dr. King said when he was in the Birmingham prison? He says, when we hear America say to the Negro, wait, it almost all the time means never. It almost all the time means never. And so we are sick and tired of waiting in the atrocities of white supremacy and systematic racism that have perpetuated, amen, violence against us as a people. It is no longer digestible. It is no longer acceptable, not just for black people, but we have white people who are sick and tired of it. We have Latino people who are sick and tired of it. We have people in other countries who are sick and tired of it. We are saying to you, you please leave us alone. I believe it was on the Amistad ship where the man said, let us be. In our text today, we have two men in the city of Philippi, which is a Roman colony. It was established for retired military men. After your service to Rome as a military man and you aged out, 
your reward was to go to Philippi. In Philippi, it was a colony, so it wasn't Rome, but they set it up like Rome. They had your traditions of Rome. They had the culture of Rome. They, they tried to put the streets like Rome and the columns of Rome, but most of all, they had the religion of Rome. And, and, and here, uh, in this area, what they did, because they believed Caesar was God, the Jews that were there, they ostracized them. They, 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 they got rid of the Jews that were there. They, they got rid of them. And we know about the atrocities, amen, from the Germans to Jewish people. But even before that, we see here, amen, something, amen, going on. They got rid of them, amen? And that's why the story tells us about women that were uh, journeying down to the river to pray. Because in the Jewish culture, you had to have 10 men to have a synagogue. And because they ostracized them, they did not even have 10 men there. And if they were there, they were incarcerated. And so they could not have a synagogue. So the women were at the river having prayer. Amen. While they were having prayer, the story tells us how Paul and Silas met them and they moved on. And then Paul was uh, trailed by a woman that was demon possessed with a spirit of divination, a spirit of python. Amen. And we got to be careful, amen, and, and understand about that spirit because that spirit is alive today. A python spirit is not a spirit that limits. It's a spirit that restricts. Amen. It's not a spirit that limits. It's a spirit that restricts. A python, amen, is a snake, amen. It, 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 it constricts you. Amen. It's not saying you have limited access. You can only go this far. But what it does is restricts. Amen. It constricts. It, it, it squeezes you. Listen to what that snake does. It wraps itself around you and begin to squeeze you. Amen. Till it, 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 it constricts or reflects all of your air till all the life is going out of you. Amen. And there's a spirit of Python in America. Amen. That has been galvanizing black people in America and squeezing us until all the life is out of us. But we understand if God be for us, who can be against us? We understand that we're not here by accident and we're not here by chance. We understand that great is the Lord and greatly is he to be praised. Come on and put your blessed hands together if you believe it. And, 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 and so they, they listen to me now. So, so Paul goes about his business with Silas and the women. And then this young girl, amen, who has the spirit of divination, who used to bring much money to her masters because she was owned by many, amen, by fortune telling, is now trailing Paul and Silas in the group, amen, saying these men are men of the most high God who bringeth you salvation. It was the truth, but she became a nuisance. It was the truth, but it was rhetorical. It was stereotypical. Typing. She was trying to expose them before they got to the people they were going to by sending that word out in front so they would disseminate. And so Paul, in his apostolic authority, did what any apostle would do. Paul, with his anointed self, did what any anointed man would do. Paul, being a believer in Jesus Christ, did what any believer would do. He cast out the devil. That's what the Bible says. And these signs shall follow them that believe. We shall We shall speak with new tongues. Amen. 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 And we shall cast out devils. Amen. It's in the Bible. And if you are believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, you have authority to cast out devils. So he cast the devil out. Amen. And it seems like from the surface of the text by him casting out the devil of the woman who had the possession of the spirit, who will no longer be able to bring her master's gain, that, that, that they were upset about that. But if you take time and look at verse 20, I know we read 25 and 20. But if you take time and read verse 20, there's something in there that helps us understand what's really going on in the text. Amen. It says that these men who are Jews are stirring up trouble. Listen to this. These men who are Jews. It doesn't say these men are stirring up trouble in our city, but it goes to the extent of their culture. These men who are Jews, they had something against them, not because they were Christians, not because they were Muslim. Oh, they had something against them because they were Jews. They had something against them because of their culture. And America has something against us only because our skin is black. But I got news for 
for you. Huh? I was born this way. Huh? I didn't get up and paint my skin like this. I didn't go inside a booth and get like this. I was born this way. We were born this way. And let me tell you something. What we learned was black is beautiful. And I've learned a long time ago how to love myself. I've learned a long time ago how to love my brother. And I don't know why you don't love us, but we come to tell you that we are people that understand that God is love and we understand that we have love for our brother and our sister and all humanity no matter what they are or where they come from and please stop the atrocities against us we're not discouraged because of things that are currently happening we're discouraged because what's happening then is happening now and it looks like it's going to happen tomorrow so we're standing up we're rising up and saying enough is enough put your blessed hands together and shout yeah Oh, yeah. Yes, Lord. So they are here, amen, like black people in America, we're here, and they're dealing with something systemic. They're dealing with something institutionalized. They're dealing with something that's moving inside of people, amen, that have nothing to do with it. And I'm sure, amen, after they gathered them together, amen, it said that they turned the whole town against them. And not only did they turn the town against them, but they trumped up charges. Uh, oh, here they are talking about how good God is. And here they are exercising their authority and casting out a devil. And now that they're supposed to have a trial, here they are trumping up charges. Uh, we know about trumped up charges. Uh, it's not justice, it's just us. Uh, every time we walk in the court, there's no justice, it's just us. Uh, and they trumped the charges up on them and said they're teaching things, amen, that's not lawful for us to hear because we believe that Caesar is God and there's no God but Caesar. And they're over here telling us that Caesar's not God. And that was farthest thing from them. They didn't care about Caesar, just like we don't care about the devil. We don't run around talking about the devil this, the devil that, the devil this the devil that we talk about the goodness of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ uh, that's what we talk about we talk about the great God of heaven and the great God of earth I'm so glad today that I know who Jesus is uh, Jesus Christ is Lord my brothers and sisters uh, to the glory of God the Father and total destruction of the devil if you believe it put your hands together and shout he is Lord he is Lord yes he is Lord he is Lord today, and I'm glad that he's Lord. He's not only Lord, but he's my God. Uh, yes, right, I said it. Jesus is not just Lord, but he's my God. And I'm happy today that we don't serve a God that has eyes and can't see. We don't serve a God that has ears and can't hear. We don't serve a God and got legs and can't walk. We serve the true and the living God. We serve the God that cleared his throat in the midst of everything and said, let there be light. That's the God that we serve. Put your hands together and say, I I know who God is. Yeah, I know who God is. I know who God is. And, 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 and Reverend Cohn said that God has an infinity toward the poor. Reverend Cohn said God has an infinity toward the downtrodden. He has an infinity toward those who are despised, rejected. Oh, I thank God for our God today who was touched by the infirmities. Amen. So he knows how we feel. He knows what it's like to be rejected. He knows what it's like to have trumped up charges. They marched him from judgment hall to judgment hall and put all kind of charges on him. Him. But I'm so glad he knew who he was uh, and he also knew who God was. Uh, they also put him in prison. Uh, but I'm so glad, uh, like Paul and Silas, uh, he was in prison, uh, but he wasn't a prisoner. Uh, am I right about it? Uh, here we are uh, in the United States of America, uh, in the prison of white supremacy, uh, in the prison of institutionalized racism. Uh, but we come to let you know uh, that we're not prisoners. Uh, just as those that were in prison huh? when Paul and Silas got put in prison huh? I'm sure everybody in there was discouraged huh? and when they saw Paul and Silas come in huh? I believe they were discouraged huh? and I believe they were murmuring huh? and I believe they were complaining huh? and Paul and, huh? and Paul and Silas huh? had trumped up charges huh? and they were discouraged too huh? but sometimes huh? I also huh? 
feel discouraged and think my work's in vain but then the Holy Spirit revives my soul and I know I can keep on keeping on if you believe that you can keep on keeping on right in your living room right in your kitchen right on your porch family room or den even those of you to hear say my mind's made up I'm ready to keep on keeping on they were inside prison and they were discouraged because it started off a good day I wasn't bothering nobody am I right about it the boys in Oklahoma were just walking down the street and a cop came up and tackled him put him on the ground he said what did I do said I'm arresting you for jaywalking said I wasn't bothering nobody just a couple of days ago some brothers were sitting on the porch just happened to be hanging out on a nice day and the officers came up they didn't like what he said so they maced him in his face I'm so tired of just having a nice day doing my own thing driving my own car when driving while black is an issue especially in New Jersey being black is an issue all over the world it started out a nice day for Brianna Terry it started out a nice day for George Floyd but then the day changed something happened and with Paul and Silas the day changed and something happened they find themselves in prison in shackles they look around the prison and isn't it strange everybody here looks like me there's nobody else committing a crime there's nobody else breaking a law how come everybody looks like me and as they assess the situation they said well we are discouraged but we might as well understand that this is a situation that we can't win appealing to a failed system with flawed justice and white America that's where black America is we realize we can't win appealing to a failed system with flawed justice but just as Paul and brother Silas recognize there's a greater power than Caesar we recognize there's a greater power than white supremacy there's a greater power than systemic racism there's a greater power than all power on the earth and the Bible says at midnight well it was something about to happen the clock was dropped to change something was going on in the atmosphere and I come to let America know something's going on in the atmosphere America we want you to know it's midnight America we're serving you no it's midnight we're not gonna stop marching we're not gonna stop protesting we're not gonna stop sitting in but we want you to open your eyes and open your ears it's midnight there's something about to happen the date is here at midnight is about to end and a new day is is about to begin and we come to tell you all over the United States of America and other countries it's midnight this season is about to end and another season is about to begin open up your eyes open up your ears and hear what we're saying I'm so glad when we're discouraged when midnight comes there's an answer uh, for discouragement uh, I heard uh, the Bible say uh, that Paul uh, and Silas uh, said we got uh, to change uh, this situation uh, so they said uh, what we can do uh, is pray
pray because I know what prayer can do. Am I right about it? Prayer, when Hezekiah was doomed to die, looked at the wall. Yeah, turned his face to the wall and prayed. And after he prayed, something changed. I know what prayer can do. It might not happen all the time like it happened for Hezekiah. The Bible, yes, Lord. The Bible, can I preach like I want to? The Bible says Daniel began to pray and 20 days nothing happened. Don't be discouraged because your prayers have not been answered. For 20 days he prayed and nothing happened. But I'm so glad he didn't stop praying on day 20 because the Bible says on the 21st day the answer came and America we may not have heard from God today but we believe that God hears our prayer am I right about it so I'm telling you I'm encouraging you I'm suggesting to you I'm pleading with you I'm beseeching you, my brothers and sisters. There's an answer for discouragement. There's an answer for discouragement. If my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, the Lord says, I'll heal their land. Legislation has failed us the courts has failed us we need wow God almighty we need an answer from on high and I'm so glad that there's a principle and that principle is heaven is attracted to sound am I right about it heaven is attracted to sound if you want uh, to get God's uh, attention. Uh, I dare you uh, to make uh, some noise. Uh, open your mouth uh, and clear your throat. Uh, make a joyful noise uh, unto the Lord. Uh, all ye body, uh, everybody, uh, everywhere. Uh, they not only prayed, uh, but they understood uh, that heaven uh, was attracted uh, to sound. Uh, and the Bible uh, yeah. The Bible says they prayed and sang praises. Can you uh, see the other prisoners uh, discouraged? Uh, and these two uh, are praying uh, and singing praise. Uh, they're trying to figure out uh, what's going on. Uh, I hear what you're saying. Uh, I see what you're doing. Uh, but what's going on? Uh, I'm mad as the devil. Uh, my charges were false. Uh, I should not be here. Uh, the punishment uh, did not fit the crime. Uh, and you're praying praying and singing praises. I'm so glad like Paul and Silas I know what prayer and praise can do. They sang praises unto God. They didn't praise each other. They didn't praise themselves. But they praised Almighty God because the Lord is great and greatly uh, to be praised uh, from the rising uh, of the sun uh, to the setting uh, of the saint. Uh, say yeah, 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 yeah. I'm so glad uh, when I'm uh, discouraged, uh, I have uh, enough sense uh, to pray uh, and praise. Hey, praise God. 
until something happened. When you pray and when you praise, we get God's attention. We don't know how God's going to move, but they were in prison. And the Bible says, suddenly, that's what I like about God. He has a day. He has a date. He has a time when he's going to move. And when God get ready to move, he going to move. I said, when God, hear me, America, gets ready to move, he's going to move. Well, the Bible, the Bible, it says that they prayed and they praised him. And suddenly, the earth in this foundation began to shake. Nobody, nobody was expecting the ground to shake. And what I like about it is God is so awesome. Yeah, heaven is his throne. Earth is his footstool. They prayed and praised and God got up. But when he got up, the earth got nervous and started shaking. Hear me now. As the earth was shaking, nobody rolled over. Nobody fell down. The walls didn't cave in. The ceiling didn't cave in. But I heard that God opened up the prison doors and that's what we're waiting for the prison doors of white supremacy to be open institutional racism be gone he's able am I right about it the God that we serve is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. We're marching because we got power. We're protesting because we got power. Am I right about it? We're sitting in because we got power. We're discouraged because we know we got power and you're constricted our power but we are ready to bust the move we are ready to come out if you won't let us out we got a message for America we are coming out of this say yeah, yeah. yeah. we're coming out of this we're coming out I'm so glad we're coming out yes we are we're coming out we're coming out our children will have a brighter future our grandchildren will have a better day we decree and we declare there's an answer for discouragement say yeah say yeah <laughs> And so when we come out, we're not coming out limping, we're not coming out broken, we're not coming out bruised, we're not coming out broke, but we're coming out bad, we're coming out bigger, we're coming out better, because we got clapping in our hands and dancing in our feet, for the joy of the Lord is our strength, say yeah. Yeah. he is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear is the strength of my life of whom shall I be afraid when the wicked and my enemies came against me to eat my flesh they stumbled and fell say yeah, yeah. yeah. I got to go now. My time is up. And I thank you for yours. But there is an answer for discouragement. It's time to pray and praise. Oh 
almighty God, I don't know about you, but I praise God with my mouth. I praise God with my hands. I praise God with my arms. But I really like to praise God with my feet. I'm asking you, can I praise the Lord with you? I said, I'm asking you, can I praise the Lord with you? Facebook family. Come on, Grace Family Church. Tell the devil, get back, devil. I got an answer for discouragement. Tell white America, get back, white America. I got an answer for discouragement. Tell the haters, get back, haters. Tell the jealousy, get back. Tell the envious, get back. Tell them, get back. Get back. Woo! I have an answer for discouragement. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer. Well, praise the Lord. The answer to discouragement. Thank you for joining in to the Cathedral Grace Family Church where we're building God's kingdom one family at a time through evangelism, education, and empowerment. Today's word was a timely word, a fresh word, a current word, a word that we need to use life application. Let us all pray to our God and praise our God in Jesus' name. Thank you. God bless you. I look to see you next week. <laughs>